Now on this Easter Sunday, our closer look at the political power of evangelicals. They're 15 percent of the adult population, yet in 2012 accounted for nearly a quarter of all voters. But is their outsized political influence fading? We'll talk with Reverend Franklin Graham and other leaders. First, here's Dan Harris. Horse. One glance at the heavily the tattooed, skinny jean wearing uh, pastor Carl Lentz. If you're new here and you're looking around, um, I love new people in our church. And you will quickly conclude that this place, called Hillsong, is not your traditional church. If you invite somebody to church, they're not normally like, that sounds so fun when you come to our church. Sometimes people are shocked because it looks like people want to be there which is like music to my ears because we do want to be there. Every Sunday in New York City, Lentz and his crew preach to 5,000 mostly young worshipers, including occasional celebrities like Justin Bieber. Here you will find fashion-forward outfits, heartfelt talk about Jesus, and professional-grade pop-inflected gospel music. But one thing you won't hear? Much talk of politically divisive issues such as gay marriage or abortion. Do you actually come out and state your positions on these matters? No, because, uh, well, I, I can't say no unequivocally, but um, by and large, I don't believe my job as the pastor is to be the chief politician. And I do think there's room for disagreement in church. This is a far cry from the evangelical megachurches I've visited in well over a decade of covering the American faith scene. And like when I interviewed Firebrand saying, televangelist, the late D. James Kennedy, in the aftermath of George W. Bush's re-election in 2004, in which so-called values voters played a huge role. What would you say to people in those states who are really worried about the impact that Christian conservatives can have on our government? Repent. <laughs> For decades, evangelicals proudly wore their politics on their sleeve, like Jerry Falwell or Pat Robertson, who even ran for president. But after two Democratic wins, some now suggest the power of social conservatives has faded. Have we seen a decline in the political potency of the religious right? There's still a powerful element in the party because they can still determine who wins the nomination. But part of the problem, not in the primaries, but in a general election, is the country in many ways culturally has moved away from their issues. Take gay marriage, where attitudes have changed substantially. 59% of Americans now support it. And while 72% of evangelicals over 30 oppose gay marriage, among evangelicals under 30, that number drops to 49%. Jim Daly, leader of the powerful evangelical organization Focus on the Family, has taken note. You can have dialogue with people you disagree with. I'm doing that now behind the scenes, talking to uh, people in the uh, gay community. Uh, we don't agree on marriage, but there are other things that we can work toward to make culture better. Daly took over for founder and political lightning rod Dr. James Dobson, who once said gay marriage would lead to group marriage or incest. From Daly, a different tone. I can be kind to you and disagree with you. That's hard in this culture, but it's something we have to relearn. Still, he notes a change in tone doesn't mean a change in principles, which all adds up to a new challenge for a new generation of evangelicals. I think we try to present people what we believe truth to be and what the gospel is and what you do with it. That's on you. For this week, Dan Harris, ABC News, New York.